All right, guys, I got the rocker panels done and the cab corners. You know, there's a lot of videos on YouTube about how to do C10 rocker panels, but it just ain't nobody does it like Rat Ride Bob's. Stay tuned and check it out. Get her done. So this is the inner rocker panel. This is the outer. And uh, just so you know, this goes in, goes down to that bottom lip. And from there, you can, me, myself, I got the option I can slide it back and forth some. I might have to go further back to, to fill that gap. But once you get it in, you see you got the uh, channel, your rubber fits in there, so you need a little space here. So with this panel, you got that. So the first thing I want to do is mark, just get an estimate of how much this is going to cover, how high it's going to come up, and get, get a mark. Of course, it's going to come up a little higher because it's not fitting tight. So get a mark on that end. And a mark on this end, which is hard to do, but I'm, we, we want to get way below this hinge area anyway. To get, they, Cause they got some beefed up stuff on the back side. We don't want to, we want to come probably cut down here actually where we want to cut. So we want to make sure we stay below those lines. We want to make sure we stay well below those lines. And the uh, same, same with the cab corner. And we'll get just a guesstimation, make sure we stay well below those lines. Of course, you don't have to use this whole panel. I mean, you cut this anywhere, but for me, uh, I probably need all of it to cover up the rust I got, so. When you start grinding this off, see there's a little pinhole there and you got some pinholes back here. So I'm probably gonna use all of it, but I need to stay below that mark when I cut this out. So the first thing I wanna do is mark, just get an estimate of how much this is gonna cover, how high it's gonna come up, and get, get a mark. Of course, it's gonna come up a little higher because it's not fitting tight. So, get a mark on that end and a mark on this end, which is hard to do, but I'm, we, we wanna get way below this hinge area anyway. To get, they, Cause they got some beefed up stuff on the back side we don't want to, we want to come probably cut down here actually where we want to cut so we want to make sure we stay below those lines we want to make sure we stay well below those lines and uh same same with the cab corner and we'll get just a guesstimation make sure we stay well below those lines. Of course, you don't have to use this whole panel. I mean, you cut this anywhere, but for me, uh, I probably need all of it to cover up the rust I got. So when you start grinding this off, see there's a little pinhole there and you got some pinholes back here. So I'm probably gonna use all of it, but I need to stay below that mark when I cut this out. And you don't want to come in here and just start cutting, cut the whole thing out at once. You don't want to do that. You want to take, you want to sneak up on it. <laughs> I call it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna make a cut, stay well below that line. I'm probably gonna make a cut like right there. 
and then a cut on the back side inside the line and get this cab corner piece out and then I can start the process of getting the rocker panel out and what I'm going to do with it I'm going to cut, cut make a cut probably right, right there and cut that rocker out on this, on this end same thing uh, I got some spot wells I got to break loose right there before I cut this so we'll make sure you get any spot well broke loose first uh, got spot wells on this side but my my piece was so you can see it is so rusted out I'm going to replace that inside piece too but it got spot wells on that you see I already cut mine out so I'm going to cut I'm probably going to cut like down here to start with get those spot wells busted loose and then cut that out right there on this cab corner they got I mean you can see them if not, grind it down and you can see it, but it got spot welds that welds to the inner cab corner. So what you want to do, you want to cut inside, well inside your mar, I'm going to probably cut like right here. And uh, cut on that side like I showed you, then I'm going to cut, come on the inside, well on the inside of these spot welds, probably cut right down through there. And then I can take my air chisel and pop those spot welds off. One of the most important things you want to do is measure this door edge. You want to kind of get a mark where it's at so you put it back same same height. So, so what I like to do is come on the edge of it right there, like right here, and measure up 16 inches and put a mark, double check it, 16 inches, it don't have to be 16, but I like to, the red flag mark right there, a 16 stud center, here's my lip right there, come up 16 inches, Put a mark. So when I put the new panel on, I can bring it up and measure. I need 16 inches. And then I can tack it on. And then if you want real show quality door edge gaps, at that point when you get it tacked on, you need to set, put the door on and get a, the door gap lined up all the way around everywhere except for the bottom. And then you can check your bottom. If you need to go up or down or whatever, get your door gap right on the bottom. But uh, unfortunately for me, my door hinges are all shot, the door latch is shot. It's almost impossible to get the door lined up until I rebuild the door. And uh, this is not going to be a show quality truck anyway, obviously. So uh, I'm going to, when I put the new one on, new rocker panel on, I'm going to measure up 16 inches and tack it in and call that good. And we'll, we'll be fine. I got to redo the bottom of the doors anyway. So 
If I need a big adjustment, I can make it when I do the rebuild the doors. Obviously, the inner rocker goes on after the outer rocker, but it's gonna be easier to show you now what I'm gonna do. This comes in like this. So this end, I'm about to do some slicing and dicing to curl that end up to match that. So it'll, you know, it'll curl. I just want to show you now because it'll be you can see it better without the outer rocker on. So that's what's going to happen there. I'm going to curl that up. I can set this in place close where I think it might be and clamp it in. Then I can take my tape measure and see how close I am. I need 16 inches from there. Okay, I need to come down eighth inch on that end. 16 here. Need to come down a quarter inch on this end. And like I said, you could cut the new off. I don't want to come this high because it, it's got some hard metal that holds a hinge in. I don't want to get into that, so I'm gonna cut this down a little bit. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut the new rocker panel down a little bit. Probably right along here. And this air channel, I had a big rust hole here anyway, so I cut that out to make it easier to get in here to weld this. Uh, but if your truck's not like that, you might have to cut this down a little lower in the front so you can get to it to weld it. And this piece here, it's just dangling, but I left it on there so I can kind of see that hole where the fender bolts up to see how close I am to where the original was. And you can see, it don't fit perfect. That hole don't line up. It's too far back. But uh, but keep in mind when you when you get these repair panels, they don't fit perfect. You got to make them fit the best you can. I mean, if you watch Derek on Vice Grip Garage last year, he done his uh, crew cab square body rocker panels, and uh, he got his parts from LMC. And they didn't fit perfect either. So it don't really matter where you buy your stuff. It ain't gonna fit perfect. You gotta make it fit best you can. So keep that in mind. Uh, LMC, the parts are a little bit more expensive. than I got this on eBay, but they probably come from the same place. They probably all come from the same overseas place anyway. So yeah, they're not gonna fit perfect. You gotta make them fit. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna lower this down a little bit. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do, so what I'm gonna do now is cut this off and then set it back up there and get it where I need it and then we can go from there. So I've trimmed the end of this off some and I ground the paint, ground the paint off where I think I might have to cut it and uh, stick this back on. And I got a mark there where I should be close. So at this point, if you want a good, really good fit on the bottom edge, you would get just get a light tack right there. Just a light tack because you're gonna cut it back off. Get a light tack there and a light tack back here. Maybe a couple places. And then put your door on. Get your door fitting all around the back, top, front and then check your bottom fit lip. So at this point, you got your, you marked 16 inches. You already tacked it, got your door, checked it, make sure the door, bottom edge fits good. Uh, so what I want to do is cut and butt. And the way I do it, I'm gonna cut, I'm not gonna cut through both, I'm gonna let the blade set on top of that piece right there and cut through. So I'm just going to get it kind of close to the front. Just clamp it on right there. No big deal. Back. 
get it close as I can. Clamp it right there. So I want to concentrate on this corner right here. I want to get it lined up here and right there. And uh, when I get that lined up, I can put a tack like back here. So I got this corner lined up and I put a tack right there. And notice how I got a gap in that butt weld so I can, when I weld it, there'd be plenty of weld in there. Obviously, once I can start, I can, like I tack it right there and take the body hammer and line, get it lined up, tack it, lined up, tack it, all the way across. And then I had to beat this corner in the submission right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, same in the front. I want. I just got that corner lined up, tack the front. Uh, I got a bigger gap here, but when I take, when I unclamp it, I can pull that gap up a little bit and tack that. And uh, like I said, if you want to show quality look, this would be another good time to put your door on and check the bottom door lip, door gap. But I'm Rat Rod Bob. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, I checked my 16. I got my 16. Double check that front and back. And uh, like I said, my door bottom edge is rotten anyway, so I got to rebuild the door, the hinges. I can't. I can't put the door my door on and get it lined up because the door hinges are shot, the door latch is shot. I mean, it just. It just can't can't do it. So, <laughs> but yeah, if you got a good door and you want a good look, a perfect fit, put your door on right now and double check it before you weld any further. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, hammer tack, hammer tack, uh, hammer tack, hammer tack. Uh, the front, I didn't, I didn't, I'm not gonna do a cutting butt there. I'm just gonna do a lap weld. I mean, I could, when I beat this in, this is butt weld. When it comes around here, it's gonna be a lap weld, good enough in the front. One more tip I wanna give you about welding up these gaps. When you do a cut and butt, you don't wanna, you don't wanna come in and try to weld straight in like that. You wanna, you wanna weld like this. So you kinda of bridge over that gap. Real short burst. So I got it welded up, ground down smooth a little bit. At this point, you got two options. You can continue grinding, welding, grinding until you get it perfectly smooth and you stand a chance of your metal being too thin or you can do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just take the hammer and just tap that in a little bit so it'll be a little low spot and body filler over it. So I have a good strong, I, my weld will be good and strong there. Uh, after I welded this right here, I took this hammer and beat that corner in and got some weld on that. So. That's how I done that. See the modification I made on the inner rocker? I mean, I just cut some splits and folded that up a little bit. And then I rolled this in. So it looks kind of like this. So this is gonna weld there. Uh, you gotta make sure that the bottom of this is all the way in the lip of the outer rocker before you weld that, so. Yeah, you gotta make sure it's tight down there. I got my cab corner fit and I had to grind down that so it'll fit in that slot better to get a tight fit to match the rocker panel. 
so I got it fitting good down there. And uh, I got it where I want it. I'm going to get a tack there and a tack there, then I'll cut butt. So I got my cab corner clamped in place. I got me several holes that's going to, I can plug weld it to that inner corner. And uh, main thing I want to do is get this corner lined up and tack. So yeah, get the corner lined up and tack, and then we can weld. All right, guys, there you have it, minus the body filler. Uh, that'd be a subject for another video. But yeah, got it's welded up, done. Cab corner, done. Inner and outer rocker, done. Yeah, like I said, tap it in a little bit, put a little body filler over it, and we're good to go. Rust prepare for dummies video. You see me fix this one spot right here, and you remember it was all had a lot of rust on the side too. Uh, had some rust up there, and a lot of rust on this side. Actually, I had to repair it from here all the way up to here. So we got one spot there that was still good. But yeah, that's that was the this was was the bad side. So uh, that's done. I got a fine-tuned body filler, no doubt. But yeah, the windshield perimeter is done. Yep, get her done. Hey guys, we're getting it. We just ain't got it yet. Appreciate you. See you next time.